Welcome to Solar Pachyderm's Star Drive 2 Brutal Campaign. Let's play! And indeed, let's play. Load it up. The Vulfar Imperium was last seen conquering out the Polyps and the uh, Draylock. We just finished the Polyp Conquest. Prior to that, we finished the Draylock Conquest. Now we're only fighting the Quartazine Collective. We have yet to meet the other races. Where were we? We have our ships here. We have our mysterious, always getting damaged ship. It starts every single combat missing almost the entire ship for some reason. Uh, we're going to try and see if we can resolve that. Confirm purchasing of that. Let's see, they are moving in with a lot of troop transports. Make sure our troops are correct, and they're not, so let's make them correct. Give ourselves our standard loadout. Alright, close. these are all right yep they're just they're all right we just finished conquering this is the last polyp world and we'll go ahead and move to intercept this fleet we will need to hold the ground combat here no way we can beat them there and this turn we are going to make sure and refit this trouble ship not that fleet so it's one of the laser defenders. I'm going to refit both laser defenders as laser defender Mark III's again, uh, if I can find it. There we go. Laser defender three. Refit. And then we're going to go ahead and buy them both. And hopefully this solves our ship entering combat damaged. Uh, I'm just gonna auto that. There's only a single cruiser. No real point in fighting that one out. Um, all right. So now we have all of our ships. Hopefully non-bugged. We'll find out in a little bit. And I don't think I can make that trek. That's too far. Let's go ahead this way. Animated reactors are finished, which means we can pack more power onto our ships and thus use fewer reactors, which is a good thing. Uh, we're going to need to build one of those after the fact, because our starbase is about to get wiped out. Um, let's check out what we could do with antimatter reactors. So here's our current uh, battleship design. Throw an antimatter reactor. And animator reactors in the core. We'll remove all these reactors and see where we sit for power. Power is at 102. We draw 78. That is perfect. That is what we're looking for. So now we'll go ahead and put some more armor back in here. We could put more PV up in the nose. Um, putting more point defense in the nose wouldn't be a bad idea. And then we can, of course, add our engine back in that we took out to put that reactor in the tail section long ago. There we go. And we're generating 96 and we're drawing 80, which is still perfectly acceptable. Um, I don't have a problem with that. We're storing 611, which is far more than we ever draw, which it basically gives us the buffer to repair our shields with the uh, shield power ability. Power to the shields ability, sorry. Let's look at... We don't really have anything else. We have cruise missiles now. We could build a design based around cruise missiles. But we do have disruptor cannons. So, what I'm going to do... 
we're going to go ahead and swap out to disruptor cannons. Now, a lot of people have, have said that, you know, I mean, let's look at this, the base numbers. Goes out to 250, damage of 100. So, at minimum range, that's 100 divided by 4, 25 per square, right? And disruptor cannons is 600, or is that 800? I honestly can't tell. If that's 600, that's 100 damage per square. So, but then you got to take in the refire rate, and the refire rate on this one is one second, and the refire rate on this is six seconds, 6.67. So if it's 800, it's more efficient. If it's 600, it's less efficient. Um, but I do like the fact that you can go up to 312. And what can you go on this one? 312? Yeah, 312. So you can go to the same range. Um, as the disruptor cannons, but the disruptor cannons hit much harder on each individual shot, which I think is an advantage. Um, I could be completely wrong, who knows. I like them. <laughs> they allow the uh, shots to actually hit hard, each individual shot. So. And, it's less power hungry on a per second basis. It's more power efficient. So that is a definite advantage. It takes more power each shot. So in a volley fire we're looking at 90 from those and 80 from these. That's 160. <laughs> and then miscellaneous small amounts here. So we're not even pulling a fifth of our, or about a, about a fifth of our total power if we volley fire everything simultaneously which is never going to happen, so that leaves us a nice buffer to play with. So, I'm going to call this Sniper 2. I'm going to save it. Confirm. And then... Interesting design. <laughs> These are very interesting designs. Okay, so Sniper 3. This is our latest design. What do we do with an antimatter reactor on you? One power output. Yeah, that's not going to work. That works, though. And that means we can put on one more of these if we want to. And we can put on... Or... We can put on that. Laser cannons, point defense. Put on two more point defense cannons, which I think is a better idea. And we sacrificed no actual ammo storage capacity. Ammo storage remained the same. We decreased the total count of reactors to two from four. And we added on two uh, point defense cannons. So I think that's good. Sniper four. And then let's look at our defense. Th Laser Defense 3. Oops. Ah, it's Control. So, Control and then click on a part. No. Ah, oh, if you don't have anything selected, Control plus click on a part gives you that part. Okay. Let's get info to learn. that works, in which case we can go ahead and sink these back down into the ship and put armor back on the outside alright let's look at the disruptor cannon, five second cooldown versus the laser cannons one second cooldown 100 damage versus 250. But it has higher damage out to longer range before it starts the major fall off point. Whereas the laser cannon dips and then slows the dip. So the damage profile is a little bit different. Um, I'm not going to add it on here because I want the fast refire rate for small things like fighters. But that's an interesting thing to note. Fusion beams would be good versus fighters. Very power hungry though. 
80 per shot. I don't actually have the uh, storage requirements on this ship. I would have to start replacing the armor plate with capacitor banks and or additional generators somewhere on the ship. And if I'm using animator generators, that poses a severe th risk to the rest of the ship. I think I'll just stick with lasers. They, I'll just stick with the lasers. They'll work just fine. So, four updated with antimatter. All right. If we want, we can update these, or we can just make sure that uh, the new fleet gets updated when it comes out fully. Make sure we get the new designs. <laughs> All right. Time to choose our research. At this point in the game, I really don't think there's a major difference in what we can actually research. We're far enough ahead. We have all the key researches that, all the key technologies that we actually need. Um, and we go for class three shields next. Heavy weapons would be good for our ground troops. Um, let's do EMP torpedo next. Time to fight off. Protect our world. Well, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that many hang back and not advance on the first turn. One laser, two lasers, three, four. There's four lasers. We need to clear this guy so when these advance we can target them. Alrighty, and this is why I have knives. Oh, 
Alright, great victory. Yay! I'm pretty sure this campaign is mostly over. I don't foresee any huge stumbling blocks coming my way. Alright, let's fight the courtesan. Let's fight. We're gonna go ahead and move into our defensive shell formation. Put these guys on the flanks. Laser defenders on the flanks of the long-range ships. There we go. And there we go. Make sure these are set to group one. These are set to group two. And immediately pause. Max our range. Select group one. Run a few seconds. Alright, let's see what they've got. Missiles. Missiles. These ships only have one engine. They are not going to be getting into the fight anytime soon. Um, standard carrier with fusion beams. No shield generator. These are the same. Yep. Yep, yep. Alright. <clears throat> we know what the enemy has now. And we'll go ahead and target that one first. <laughs> Alright, that should be enough to finish it off. We'll swap targets now. Yeah, that was more than enough to finish it off. Okay. <laughs> I honestly did not think that I was going to get through that quickly. I thought I was going to have a few more hits. Not where I wanted them to. You can see our point defense is handling all the fighters as they come in. Which was the intention of having all this point defense and these two dedicated defensive point defense carry or cruisers <laughs> if the AI sent in all those fighters simultaneously it would take me longer to chew through them and they would get more damage out but they still wouldn't get a credible amount of damage out I don't think um, I have to see if the AI changes its tactics in the future with uh, more patches That, that happened a little bit quicker than I anticipated. I'm going to wait for this ship to blow up, then I'm going to target the next one on the list. Because that means the shots for this one to blow up are already... Alright, there we go. Attack the last one. Alright, and we win. Now, my other fleet is the one that has that had the ship that was mysteriously being fully damaged, even though it was fully repaired at the start of combat. We'll have to see if that's been resolved as soon as we enter a combat up here. Should be in the next two turns, we should have a combat with it to find out if we fixed the bug. Let's see. 
well, I guess two more turns because the planet's on the far side of the system. Talking about that fleet running away. No, it hasn't entered our space. It's definitely leaving. <laughs> All right. Next turn. And this is an interesting graphical bug. And I've seen that once before on this campaign so far, I think. All right, let's see if we have a damaged ship in the start of the battle or if it's fully healed. And... We don't have a damaged ship. Okay, so I don't know if the problem was with the uh, game file or the ship file or just some weird glitch. I don't know. I don't have the tools to diagnose that. But I did post a post on the forum with a general description of what was happening. So we'll, we'll see. And control 2. Alright, begin. Pause. Group 1. Make sure they're all set to maximum. I don't want them to move. They don't need to get any closer. They're they're designed as seizures. Designed to take everything out from extremely long range, and we'll attack his starbase. <laughs> now the next question is, if one of these two ships, whichever one that was the culprit, becomes heavily damaged, will the problem reoccur? The next question being, if a different ship becomes heavily damaged, will the problem reoccur? Hmm. <laughs> Using extreme long-range artillery to try to hit corvettes at long range. The shots are as big as the corvettes. I don't think it's very easy to aim those things on targets that small. That is what the fast refire rate of the lasers is good for. Tackling very small targets. Now here's an interesting question that I actually don't have the answer for. Abnormally loud ground combat. And my, my problem is I don't know a good way to objectively test this. And the question I have is, is skill level hard capped? No, we can't, actually. Nice try, though. <laughs> uh, you declared war on me. You're, you've got to go. It's the only way. So ships have a uh, skill level, to continue my point, ships have skill level. But the problem is, is that they cap at 6, but is that hard cap? Is that a hard cap, or is that a soft cap? Now, a hard cap means that any other item you have in the game that affects skill level can't be increased above the limit. Or is it soft capped, where if I have a level 6 ship, and I have a CIC with a sensor suite on it, and a sensory module, will that ship, instead of being a level 6, will it be a level 9 for purposes of targeting? 
I don't know how to objectively uh, test that. <laughs> so Palmar is now polluted. Palmar one. So we need to fix that as best we can. Something I need to do is we need to go back and revisit what we're producing on every colony. So. And we put a Xeno Mine in here. Automated factory in there. We'll put it after the clean energy. All right. And we'll do that. We need to revisit what all of our colonies are doing. Like this one. You're not doing anything. <laughs> not doing anything whatsoever. You're not even building trade goods. That's a no-no. Alright, and... Make sure I don't have any others that are not doing anything at all. Alright. Here's full far. Put one here, uh, one more in there, all right. Yeah. That looks good. That looks good. That's fine. That's fine. I think. Uh, we can put a Xeno mine here, actually. And... Yeah, I think a Xeno mine's good. Make sure we have our automated factory and just shut up structure. We put a battle station on here as well. Uh, Xeno mine. And some anti pollution in a spaceport. Alright, that one's good. Uh, Xeno mine would be good. Soil enrichment. Uh, pollution, industry, spaceport. Alright, and then. Xeno mine. Starbase. All right, call that one good. Persia. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Cracks me up every time. Although I don't know what buying the rug does. The only thing I can think of is that there's some quest, side quest you can get if you have the right leader or something that requires a rug. I don't know, though. Be fun to find out. All right, let's go ahead and uh, set up our fleet. Back to our standard firing. Oops. Standard attack formation. Set up group one. Make sure we're at max range. I wish I could set these as the default for this fleet, you know. Set it once per fleet, you know. So I don't have to keep doing this. Uh. Oh, that was... That died quick.
All right. And another victory. And finish that up. And fight! The ground invasion will commence. The incredibly loud ground invasion. I need to check and see if there's new volume sliders. I think that that was a mentioned thing for this patch. Set up our defensive shields. And another victory. Urban infrastructure, something we don't really need, but it will be nice for our very large planets to have. A single population and shrinking. That tells me that he's having overall food pop problems either because he doesn't have freighters or he doesn't have enough food production, I'm not sure. Um, since there's only one population here and the values are very, very small. I'll go ahead and launch our army again. And we'll go ahead and idle here one turn in orbit so that we replenish our ammo stores. Uh, this fleet has full on ammo stores, and we're going to go. We are attacking the homeworld, Cordon Aunt. <coughs> and fight! Cordon Aunt, the invasion begins! You know what, I could do it th right here. Yay! And we'll take out the Starbase first, it's the most dangerous combatant. It's really not that dangerous. It's just the most dangerous. <laughs> oh, I misjudged it. I thought that would kill the starbase. <laughs> Not quite. I also don't think that starbase is going to be shooting much anymore, though. Finish off the starbase. And then they can automatically finish off all the ships. Hmm. And then, well, let's go ahead and have everyone attack a small ship. And we have a victory, guys and gals. We have a victory. Hooray! Cordon Ot, the ground invasion commences. Well, apparently after I destroy that. Yeah. 
Eh? Why aren't you refueling? Or aren't you uh, rearming? Um. So I'm at a friendly world. Now oh, let's try moving. Let's try moving over the planet <laughs> and then sitting a turn, I guess. Oh no! I want to invade. All right, fight. Oops. Oh, we got three lasers over here. That's that's a few. Alright, another successful invasion. These troops are so elite by now. <laughs> Too bad the troops don't gain XP. Discharger assimilated. That's alright, I guess. Automated River Bay, Aeroponics Farm, Research Lab, Industrial Output Pollution Down. Starbase, spaceport, biospheres, trade goods. All right. I actually really don't care at this point what I build, so long as I build stuff. It doesn't matter anymore. I'm making so much money. Um, I am at high tax rate, like like high tax rate five percent. Lol. Um, I could actually easily sustain more. All right. So we'll find out if that will replenish my ammo. Will my ammo forever never be replenished? I mean, it's not at critical levels, but I would like it re replenished. That would be nice. Oops. Alright. Alright. I've now sat about this thing for three turns. Oh, it's got replenished. Yay! Alright, so apparently we weren't close enough the first time. We are going to make a way stop at Calast 2, or Celest 2, Celast 2, hmm, not sure how that's pronounced, that's bizarre looking. EMP torpedoes are researched, and we're not using fighters, so we're not going to care about fighter shields, although this is a really, holy moly, that's gotten buffed! Wow, before this patch, that was 100 points of damage. That is a huge buff. Unless I can't remember, but I thought that was 100 points of damage before the before the patch. So we'll go with class 3 shields. Don't worry, Alawax. We will liberate you. the poor starving Alwaks at this planet. We have come as their savior in their time of need. In our... To liberate them from the death camps of their oppressors. The evil mollusks. Never mind the fact that we're in German U-boats and... Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. They're on different Z-levels. I didn't really notice that before. Alright. Take out the starbase! The only really important command in this fight. <laughs> Alright. And, uh... Nice knowing you, Cortezine. 
That station is not going to last much longer. And bye bye. No, not yet. A couple more volleys. And there it goes. And let's just make this go as quickly as possible. Everyone, close the gap. Close the gap quickly. Whoosh. Okay, he just had an audio stutter there. It audio started for me really hard. Like, I had like almost two seconds of no audio. So, that has nothing to do with the video. That was all in the game. Battle is won. And invade. Well, that's awkward. But nevertheless, a victory. We now have orbital habitat, which cannot be built in asteroid fields, but can be built everywhere else to great effect. And we'll just buy this outright right here and buy this outright, might as well. Um, Starbase. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, we need to launch the troops. Oh, we're at 19 and 19 freighters again. Um, bah humbug. Right. And we need to send you guys over here. And more freighters, please. Just more freighters. And uh, orbital habitat while you're at it. Hmm. Overcrowding down. Supercomputer. Trade goods. Alright. <laughs> that should be good. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Alright. <laughs> All right, and uh, we're gonna come down here. And intercept the crystals. That's a couple of crystals right there. Eight small crystals, one large crystal. Against our shining navy. These ones are only shining because they just came out of the they haven't. They, they're on their shakedown cruise. That's why they're shiny.
Set our max engagement range. I think I'll just let them auto fire. I mean, everything's the same, so I don't really care which ones they kill. They just need to start killing them. Alright. Well, they need to start shooting at something else now. That one's dead. Yep. There it goes. Poof. Shield millers on my right flank on my battleship are suffering heavily. It's being very heavily targeted on that side by the crystals. But, held the shields dead. And the large crystal is now dead. And all of our shields actually held. Uh, our battleship took a little bit of hull damage because it has no shields on the rear and it has no shields over its whole body. So, just couldn't fit them in the core. However, I think we can go do that now. In the threat of the Crystal Menace. I finally have a fleet up there that's not tied down in war. <laughs> Get our fuel tanks topped off. Uh, where'd that rift come in at? Uh, oh, it's down here. It's quite a ways away. Hmm. Alright, let's move in. There should be two more planets to take out. Excellent, except for the pollution part. <laughs> uh, that's not going to have enough fuel. Alright, change plans. Send in the fleet! Let's take out the Crystal Menace. What is that? Is that a ship of mine over there? It can't be. Alright. <laughs> I think we're in trouble, boys. I don't think we're going to do it. Especially not with a design like this coming at us. <laughs> All right, now that, that threat is finally taken care of. <laughs> Knowledge of physics up by 50 research points. That's not a whole lot. <laughs> All right, head back to town. And 
We are sucking on fumes on that one fleet. <laughs> I this tech field right here, I really have never felt pressured for any of these. Um, I've never hurt for food. I've never built a fleet around needing this. Um, not sure that I'd want to, but I just haven't. And I've never really had a need for this. So... It's going to get heavy weapons at this point. Let's go ahead and stop moving so we stop using up our fuel until we've uh, captured that. Alright, where are we heading? We're heading here. Unfortunately, there's really nothing I can do about it. I don't have anything that can get here to protect it, take out the master ships. So we're just going to lose the. Uh, Gonna have to lose the starbase, folks. Not that big a deal. And fight. Alright, whatever. Kill. <laughs> Alright, and I think we're going to end this episode early at the end of getting this done. Taking out the courtesan. As soon as we take out the courtesan, we're going to end the episode. I think that'll be a good breaking point. And then we can spend the next couple of episodes expanding the Empire, searching for the last remaining players, last remaining computer players, and wiping them out. Alright, let's go ahead and wipe out the little ships, everybody. Audio problems. Yay. <laughs> a nice feature would be able to assign, when you build a ship, assign weapons in the ship designing phase in the shipyard. Assign weapons to weapon groups. So you actually click on a ship and say all weapon groups in this, you know, all of these, all of the weapons in this weapon group fire at this size target and above. Fire, you know. So that way I could designate my railguns to fire at only um, cruiser and above size. And everything else, you know, and slow turreted guns fire at, you know, frigate and up. Spinals firing at cruiser and up type thing. So that I'm not just wasting shots at things that won't hit, with things that won't hit anyways. It would be a nice touch. Not needed, but it would be a nice touch. I mean, think about it like this way. In Master Iron 2, you didn't fire your heavy mounts at fighters. That didn't make that doesn't make sense. Alrighty.
Particle capacitor is very useful for races using particle beams. Um, I'm not currently designing anything or using particle beams, so that's a limited use to me. None of my designs make use of particle beams. I mean, I suppose I could switch over to using particle beams. Doesn't really seem like something that I would get a lot of mileage out of at this point. I'm not sure. Hmm. You have... well... I have all of his technology. Every last one. Did I really leave my ground troops way up here? I did. I'm so good at the game. Woot woot. <laughs> uh, I noticed a discrepancy because these values were not the same. And, yeah. The difference being transports. Oh, wow. Bye-bye, Starbase. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's embarrassing. <laughs> so many master ships. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And let's liberate the last owl walk. Remember, guys, we're not slaughtering these owl walk infantry. No, no. We are freeing them from the evil oppressors. And that, folks, is it. We have liberated the last Owlwalk. And another typo. Right here. Zero, if you watch this. Typo, typo, typo. All right. All right, and with that, We'll call this an episode. We have been playing the Volfar Imperium. We are on Brutal, and we have basically conquered half the galaxy. 
There's two more AIs out here somewhere that we haven't come across yet. We're going to try to find them on our next episode, and hopefully subjugate them. See you next time.